Now, setting up your development environment for the first segment of these videos is going to be super straightforward because the only thing that we're actually going to need is Node.js. Now, you can get Node.js by going to nodejs.org and downloading the version that's appropriate for your operating system. Now, there's two versions of Node here, one that says recommended for most users and one that says current with the latest features. I know that this says recommended for most users, but we are doing cutting edge shit here, so we are not most users. We are going to actually need the current version with the latest features, so I encourage you to download that. Now, I know that some people might be watching these videos on a PC, some people might be watching these on a Mac, some people might be using Linux. Just to make sure that there's absolutely no confusion and we have a consistent development environment that can be easily reproduced from scratch, I'm going to be doing this entire tutorial series on an EC2 instance that I provisioned from scratch. Now, you don't, if you already have um, Node.js installed and you have a development environment on your computer, you do not need to replicate this step. You don't even need to watch this video. You can just go ahead to the next video. I just want to be very explicit about the exact steps I'm taking to provision my development environment so that when we get into the more advanced stuff later in the road, there's no confusion about what's going on. Also, this is not a video about how to provision an EC2 instance. I have a video on my YouTube channel where I show how to provision EC2 instance from scratch if anyone's curious, but I'm just gonna walk through the process and show which libraries I'm installing again so that we have a reproducible development environment and there's no confusion about any DevOps related stuff and we can just focus on the Ethereum stuff. All right, so I'm gonna go to EC2 and I'm going to create a new instance from scratch. I'm going to be using the Amazon Linux AMI and I'm going to be using a c3.large instance. The actual instance size does not matter. It's just I we're going to be installing Node.js, and I just want it to go faster. So I'm going to be using a bigger instance. Uh, add storage, tag instance, configure security group. I don't actually care about this. Review, and we're ready to launch this instance. I already have an existing key pair. I acknowledge that I have it. And I can view the instances. This one should be launching up. I get the public IP to it. So now I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to SSH into that instance using dash I and the Ethereum uh, key pair PAM that I set for it. I'm also going to be using this dash R flag, which will actually expose a remote port on the instance. And this is so that I can use my Atom text editor to edit files that are on the EC2 instance. So I'm going to do dash R 52698, and I'm going to set that to local host uh, colon 52698. And then the default user for Amazon Linux is EC2 dash user, and I'm going to need to, I actually think I did copy that IP address, so I should be able to log in to or SSH into the instance like this, and I am in. First thing that I'm going to do is install git, so I'm going to be needing git to install any other library, so I'll sudo yum install git and hit y. And that's complete. The next thing I'm going to install is homebrew, so that I can just easily install libraries and packages with it. Installing homebrew on Linux is a little wonky, but it shouldn't be that complicated. And by the way, all of these scripts are going to be in the description of the video, and you should be able to just copy the gist and redo, reproduce this if you really wanted to. Then I'm going to need to set the paths for homebrew so that I can actually run the executable files from my command line. And now I'm going to need to source my bash profile just so that loads and it should be which brew and that should show up so that I know that this is now in my path. I'm going to now install the C development tools. You're going to basically need this to do any kind of stuff on your instance. You need to install that development tools uh, library. And that should be all that you need to do before you can install Node.js. So I'm just going to do brew update and brew install dash v node. The reason I'm passing that dash v flag into node is that that's going to be activate the verbose mode where it's going to actually be logging output every time it installs one of its dependencies. And because installing Node.js can take quite a while depending on the memory that you have available in your instance, I just want that verbose mode so that I can see that it's constantly logging output and there's nothing wrong with it. So we're going to let this install and then I'm just going to fast forward to when it's done. Okay, so it looked like that finished installing and we can verify by doing which node and we'll see that we actually have access to it and we can do node dash dash version 
And that shows we have version 7.0. Okay, so one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run this quick script, which will configure the remote Atom text editor so I can edit my files on my EC2 instance with my Atom text editor. I'm going to install Tmux which will allow me to split my terminal window into multiple instances. And just to test that the Atom works, I should be able to um, make a new file called .tmux.conf, which is the tmux configuration. I should be able to open that in Atom by doing radom.tmux.conf. Uh, and I have a tmux configuration from a previous build that I'm just going to set there and save. And just to show you how tmux would work, you can just start a new session by doing tmux new session n, and we'll just call this session one. And that will allow me to split my window vertically like this. And it just makes for a better workflow. Then I'm going to finally install the actual test RPC library with NPM so that we can verify that our development workflow is correct. So the test RPC library is a local instance of the Ethereum blockchain that you can run um, just locally on your machine for development purposes. So Ethereum is a protocol. It just defines a list of methods that any client needs to implement. So it's possible to just have a local client that just mocks out basically all of the functionality and just lets you test some of your interactions. And the test RPC is gonna be a valuable tool for us just to get our head, just to get our bearings, I guess, on the Ethereum ecosystem, just to get our bearings on what some of the commands are, what some of the behaviors are before we start migrating to a live workflow where we're actually transacting data to the live Ethereum blockchain. So once that's set up, we can verify it by running the command test RPC. And we should be able to see that it does launch this thing that you know shows a bunch of public and private keys that verifies that it's working. And it says that it's listening on localhost 8545. So all we want to be able to do now is be able to run a JavaScript console and be able to connect to this local test RPC. And we're just going to verify that that works. So I'm going to create a new directory called just test and then I'm going to cd into it and I'm going to make a package.json file. If you're not familiar with Node.js, package.json is just the, um, it's basically like the gem file in Ruby where you just define a bunch of dependencies and libraries and metadata about your project and it will just sort out how to correctly download everything in the right order. The library that we're going to be using for this video is going to be something called web3.js. It's just web3 on npm. And this is just a bunch of Ethereum functionality that is like wraps the Ethereum protocol. So this is version 017 alpha. What this actually does is not important right now because we'll get to it in the series. I just want to like verify that my EC2 instance is correct, uh, Lee configured. So I'm just going to do npm install. This should now download that web3.js library. And I can open my node console just by doing node. And I should be able to set a variable equal to that web3 library by doing var web3 equals require web3. Just to verify that it works, I should get this function. And then I can create a new instance of that web3 by using setting an HTTP provider to be localhost 8545, where my test RPC is running. So if I set a variable equal to web RPC, PC and do web3 rather and do new web3 new web3 dot http or i'm sorry dot providers dot http provider and then pass in local host 8545 now i should have an actual web3 instance that's connected and if i do web3 dot f dot accounts i should get a list of accounts that is defined by the test rbc and if you can get this far where you can actually run web3.f.accounts and see the accounts listed from, and these are the private keys, but if I go up to the uh, public keys, you should be able to see that these accounts do match. And if you can see this, if you can see web3.f.accounts and you have your test RBC, then you have your development environment configured for the first segment of these screencasts and we are good to go.